Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at four rehab exercises for labral tears in the shoulder joint. So if you've dislocated your shoulder or subluxed it, or you notice instability like it wants to pop out of the joint, stay tuned for today's exercises. Also, before I get into today's video, I also just want to mention that my new book is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble with all major bookstores. It has comprehensive rehab programs with pictures of me doing the exercises for the 50 most common conditions we treat in physical therapy, including labral tears in the shoulder. So, you know, while my exercises do, or my YouTube videos do show a few exercises, the book has three phase programs like you'd get from a physical therapist. So if you need another resource, I'll put a link down in the description for the book. So when we're thinking about the labrum and the shoulder, the labrum is basically a piece of cartilage that goes around the socket of the shoulder and helps improve stability and fit. It helps improve the fit of the humerus bone and the shoulder blade, the part of the shoulder blade called the glenoid. So basically that ball and socket, the, the labrum goes around that socket. So when people have tears of the labrum, we might hear about bang cart tears or slap tears. It basically compromises stability of the joint. So we really want to work on neuromuscular control, especially with rotator cuff exercises to help encourage stability in the joint again. We're not going to cause the labrum to heal, but we can regain stability by improving neuromuscular control. So for the first exercise, most people when they dislocate their shoulder, the ball pops forward out of the socket. So we really want to strengthen the subscapularis muscle on the front of the shoulder joint. So to do that, we're going to take a piece of theratubing here and secure it. Uh, to something sturdy at your house. And then what you want to do is have this, take a small towel roll, roll it up, put it in between your elbow and your side. That'll sort of help protect the shoulder joint and make sure that you stay in a per, pure rotational plane of motion. I'm going to start with my arm out away from my side in external rotation. And then I'm going to use that subscapularis muscle, that internal rotator to pull in towards my stomach and then back out nice and slow with control through that eccentric phase. Okay, so for this exercise and all of the exercises in this video, we're going to look at doing three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions every day or every other day, depending on how your shoulder responds to the movements. Okay, so this first one, again, really important for stabilizing the front side of the shoulder joint. As you get better and this becomes easier where my shoulder is in neutral, we can progress this exercise and I'll show that here in the next clip. For this next version of internal rotation, we're gonna take the shoulder into a less stable position. So again, start with it in neutral and then as you feel more stable, you can go to this position. For this one, we're gonna go into a 90-90 position. So I'm gonna go out to this, my side. So my shoulder's at 90 degrees of abduction and my elbow's at 90 degrees of flexion. And I'm gonna again use that subscapularis muscle to move through internal rotation. So Try to keep your shoulder basically in the same spot and just create pure rotation. So going down towards the floor, this is the concentric phase for the subscapularis muscle and then the eccentric phase coming back. Subscapularis is the only rotator cuff muscle that turns our shoulder in like this and again, strengthening this muscle will improve stability on the front side of the shoulder joint. So again, add this one in when you're feeling more stable and you have good control and strength with the internal rotation exercise in neutral, then you can add this one in in the 90-90 position. For the next exercise here, we're gonna look at external rotation of the shoulder, working the rotator cuff muscles through the opposite motion. Now, I'm gonna switch and show you on my right arm so you can see uh, what this movement looks like, but just realize a second ago, I was doing internal rotation with my left arm. Technically, if my problem was on my left arm, I would turn to do this next movement, but then you couldn't see it. So I'm gonna show it on my right arm. So for this one, what you would do is start basically the opposite of the last exercise. This time my uh, arm will start in by my stomach and I'll rotate out away through external rotation. So these rotator cuff muscles are on the back side of the shoulder blade. Primarily this is gonna work infraspinatus and teres minor. And like internal rotation, we're starting here in neutral with the towel roll in between the elbow and the trunk to help protect our shoulder joint and make sure that we move through pure rotation. If you don't have the towel roll, sometimes people will try to move their arm away from their body. So this makes sure that you kind of pinch the towel roll and you get pure rotation 
in your shoulder joint. So again, start here when you start feeling strong and stable with this one, then we'll again go to that 90-90 position and I'll show what that looks like. All right, so now we're gonna go back to that 90-90 position, but this time for extra rotation. So again, I'm gonna start, instead of starting up here and moving into internal rotation like I did before, I'm gonna start at the sort of end position and work up towards external rotation. So sit up straight, kind of get yourself in a good postural position and then work through that external rotation movement. Again, try to make sure it's just pure rotation. Try not to move around like this in your shoulder joint, forward and back, just move through that rotation. And you should feel this get tired on the back side of the shoulder blade in that infraspinatus and teres minor muscle. So again, progress to these 90-90 positions when you feel really like you've got good control and stability in the neutral position. And then you can add these in and it will really just work to make that joint more stable. The next two exercises are gonna be closed chain exercises where you're gonna be putting your weight in your arms and we're gonna to work towards being in a push-up position on the ground. But obviously in the beginning that might be too challenging. So what I want you to do is find an elevated surface. You could even start against a wall and standing if you're feeling very unstable. I'm gonna show kind of a level down here on the bench. And this first exercise is called a shoulder tap. So what I'm gonna do is if I have you know one arm probably that the one that's unstable, I'm gonna alternate back and forth. But what I'm gonna do is kind of protract and retract my shoulder blades and find the in-between position, find a good stable position you can put your feet a little wider on the floor to give yourself a little better base. And then I'm gonna just tap each shoulder. So one side will be probably easier because that shoulder won't be injured. And then the other side, you're really gonna have to work to keep stable. So really lock in, use your muscles to kind of lock that position in and then touch. Obviously the arm that has all the weight on it is the one that's being challenged. So you're just gonna go back and forth like this. You're gonna try to do as many reps as you feel comfortable with, but maybe Again, shoot for that three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, really working on the ability to use your muscles to stabilize the shoulder joint. And obviously as this gets easier, then you can take it to the ground and tap from side to side. For this last exercise, we're gonna use a loop band around the wrists, and I'm gonna show this one on the ground so you get an idea of what the harder progression is like. So again, with this one, when you're starting out, maybe do it on a bench or a table up higher until you've got that good neuromuscular stability. But as you get better at it, then what you're gonna do is, you know, you'll have the band here around your wrists, you're gonna get into a push-up position, and then it's gonna take that tap exercise we just did and make it more challenging. So now what I'm gonna do is put all my weight on one arm, and I'm gonna reach out to the different positions of the clock. Kind of reach straight ahead, out to the side, back at an angle, and then straight back. And then you can shift and give that arm a break and go over to the other one. Now, with this exercise, you probably won't be able to do three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. What I'd recommend is just try to go around the clock five times with each arm, so 10 total. You can hear when I do this, you know, I'm getting out of breath. It's pretty challenging. So just work your way around. At the end of the day, the main goal with these is to make sure that you can keep your shoulder stable. And we know that when people get fatigued, they're more likely to dislocate their shoulder. So only do the reps that you can tolerate. If you start getting fatigued, you don't wanna lose stability and re-injure your joint in the labrum. So just do what you can. Again, the ground is really hard. So this is a great one to do against the wall. You can stand up against the wall and just work on the clocks there. That's a great place to start. And then over time, work to lower surfaces with the ultimate goal of getting down to the ground. Okay, so those are four exercises you can try for shoulder stability and labral tears. Again, if you need another resource, I'll put the link to my book down in the description. Please leave any comments you have, and I'll also link my other rotator cuff videos here in case you need some other exercises to keep, work on, keep working on building stability. All right, you guys, see you in the next video, bye.